friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a very hard cataract look at the brownish black appearance of this cataract let us observe fecal emulsification of this granite hard cataract by this time the main incision and a side port on the left side of the main incision have been made and now the anterior capsule of this cataract is being stained with tripan blue dye underneath and above because i want to get some contrast during capsular excess a bit of adrenaline has been injected hoping that the size of the people will be maintained the dye is washed out and then 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is injected to fill up the anterior chamber this is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose the methyl cellulose has been applied over the corneal epithelium to get better visibility and now capsular excess capsular excess is being done with the help of a uterita forceps a capsular tag is raised by the forceps itself and a large excess is done size of this people is about 6 mm and size of this rexis is about 5.75 mm almost 6 mm and now hydro dissection since we cannot see the fluid wave going from one side to the other side very gently hydro dissection is done small amounts of psas is passed just under the anterior capsular rim at multiple points the nucleus is tapped very gently and then the nucleus is rotated and now the nucleus is free from the capsule some more visco and now the tip of the feco handpiece the tip of the feco needle is being introduced look at the exposed part of the feco needle it is more than the routine cases this is to get more ultrasonic energy to deliver more ultrasonic energy into the substance of the nucleus and this is my technique of submarine chop tip goes into the substance of the nucleus it goes through the nucleus the chopper supports the opposite equator so that it doesn't come out of the back and then after crossing the central hard part the chopper is used and now see what happens suddenly the pupillary margin just below the main incision got sucked in into the feco needle aspirating port of the feco needle and the people is becoming small so on more complication intra operative meiosis the people has become more small size of the people by this time is about 4 mm and i don't want to continue without using a people expansion device and this is the people expansion device that i use nowadays this is b hex people expander invented by dr suven bhattacharjee of india b hex means bhattacharjee hexagonal this is made of polyimide a uh, plastic material there is no joining it's a single piece single plane ring there are notches and flanges alternate flanges are tucked i tuck the flanges with the tabs and 
now I have taken two instruments the chopper in my right hand and Sinsky hook in the left hand and I'm dividing the two heminuclei separating the two heminuclei and it has been done and now I don't need the FECO needle exposed that much so I decrease the exposed part of the FECO needle and then go into the anterior chamber and I am going to chop the heminuclei into smaller fragments. Again the div goes into the substance of the nucleus and when it crosses more than 50% of this heminucleus the chopper is used to divide the nucleus into two parts this is the other heminucleus it is also divided into two pieces yes we have got four large free fragments now each large fragment is tilted and emulsification of this large tilted fragment is started from the apex from the very beginning we are in high flow high vacuum mode flow rate is 45 ml per minute and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury and ultrasonic energy used is 85 percent this is Faro's from Oatly and now this is emulsification of the third nuclear fragment at this time we must look at the behavior of the posterior capsule our subconscious mind is taking care of the nuclear piece but the conscious mind is looking at the posterior capsule and always the emulsification is being carried out keeping the tip of the FECO needle in the central 3 to 4 millimeter safe zone at this time during emulsification of the last piece more care is being taken at this time we can take several measures in this case I am going to decrease the vacuum and flow rate not now after some time after decreasing the size of this space to about 50 percent yes now from this point I ask my assistant to decrease the vacuum to only 60 six zero millimeter of mercury vacuum and flow rate is only 20 and see the four air bubbles they are not moving at all and this indicates that I am working far away from the corneal endothelium and I am not using very high in vacuum and very slowly I am emulsifying this last piece one more technique that we can use is place the eye wheel first and then emulsify this last nuclear piece but since there is B hex I decreased the vacuum and 
wanted to emulsify the paste without catching the posterior capsule and it has been done very safely and now cortical cleanup visco has been injected I am using a 23 gauze Simco cannula a very thin Simco cannula for removal of the cortex and I don't find any cortex from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock now I go through the side port left side port and I got lot of cortex at 10 o'clock and 9 o'clock now there is some sub incisional cortex I can see so to remove the sub incisional cortex I am making this side port at 7 o'clock now I go through this side port and I remove this cortex and see this big piece of cortex was there yes now cortical cleanup is done very nicely now implantation of the intraocular lens these cases may have posterior capsular range during emulsification of the last piece so it is always better to select a multi-piece intraocular lens which can be placed in the sulcus and I have enlarged the main wound because I am using a B cartridge and I want the cartridge to go inside the anterior chamber so the incision has been enlarged to about 3.1 millimeter and this is a technis multi-piece intraocular lens from about medical optics now Johnson and Johnson and now the leading haptic has gone into the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is placed in the capsular bag with the help of a Macpherson's forceps now this is a Sinsky hook it dials the lens and now I am removing the B hex pupil expander. Just untuck all the flanges and remove it. And now the pupil has taken this kind of shape because the pupillary margin at 10 o'clock was taken into the aspirating port of the phaco needle while I was making the first job uh, rotating it 180 degree and now the viscoelastic substance from anterior chamber and from the capsular bag is removed with the help of bimanual irrigation aspiration and this is a bit of moxifloxacin the side ports are closed very nicely corneal stroma on either side of these stab wounds are hydrated and these stab wounds get closed this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber the anterior chamber is washed very meticulously for removal of visco and then the simco is used to form the anterior chamber and then the case is concluded I have some post-op pictures after four hours see there is no corneal edema cornea is clear there is mild anterior chamber reaction because this is just four hours after surgery thank you very much for your attention wish not it were easier wish you were better